Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my daughter Harlow's 16 month update video. I know that a lot of people do after the yearly update, they do like the 15 month and the 18 month update, but of course, knowing me, I do everything ass backwards and the 16 month update is just going to have to do because obviously she's way past 15 months. It's already August and her birthday was in April. So we're just rolling with it and that's what I'm going to do today. Um, there's pretty much a lot to update you guys on. So I just thought that I would fill you guys in. She is a preemie. So she was born almost three months premature. So like around two and a half months premature. She was supposed to be due in June and she was born April 5th. So as of August 5th of this month, she is currently 16 months old. She's pretty much developmentally all caught up as far as like her milestones and all of that. And she is on the physical chart for a regular baby now. So basically she's like, she's on the scale as far as like a normal baby would go. So she's not like off the scale. I don't know if that just made any sense, but it makes sense to me. And for those of you who have preemies, well, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about as far as the scale goes. Like a lot of people say, oh, you know, my kid is in the 97th percentile as far as height and weight goes, blah, blah, blah. Well, Harlow is not in the 97th percentile. Um, she is on the scale of a normal baby now which is really good so anyways with all of that being said you guys are interested in hearing what my daughter harlow's 16 month update is then please just keep on watching is now 18 pounds so i'm just giving you guys like basically like the rough update because i don't have her exact weight as of right now but when we last went to the doctor for her for her 15 month update, she was 18 pounds. Um, she, her height is 30 inches. She's all vaccinated and all of that. She's obviously walking. Um, you guys have seen like my, or her first steps on one of my vlogs. <laughs> so she's walking, pretty much running now. She's still in size three diapers, but I kind of want to move her up because they're starting to get a little tight around her waist. So I think that she should move up to like a size four or five pretty soon. Um, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. She is saying a few words now like she doesn't like full-on say sentences yet or anything like that but she can definitely like understand me a lot more now and she understands like a lot of words and she can say a couple of words she says mama dada she says hot she says that and she can kind of like point to what she wants let me fix that for you um she's on my phone and she's on kids tube so are you dancing come here come here cutie what are you doing and that's another thing she loves to dance like anytime she hears music she's dancing are you dancing <laughs> you're so funny you just dance away huh bubby oh as far as she has like a hemangioma underneath her left eye so basically it's just a birthmark um she is on medication for that, which she's on propranolol, um, but she is getting weaned off. So we Yay. saw the hematologist, I want to say end of last month. Yeah, I think it was the end of last month. And um, basically sh the he hematologist um, gave me a weaning schedule as far as her medication goes. So now she's only getting 0.5 mLs two times a day so next week she'll only get 0.5 mls about once a day and then after that she'll be done with the medication and the reason why she's on propranolol in the first place is because it was supposed to help like reduce the inflammation in her birthmark or it was supposed to not let it get any bigger which i think that it definitely helped um in doing that and doing what it was supposed to do but I guess past 15 months it doesn't really it, it 
doesn't affect their system anymore so um even if she were to continue to take the medication oh, not much else that the medication can do for her right now so that's why she's getting weaned off of it they did say that um she could get her birthmark lasered right now but personally i don't want to do that because i don't want my daughter to be going every other month and being put under anesthesia anesthesia i don't know how you say it but i don't want her getting put under um and having to do that for a laser treatment every month or every other month so um i'm personally going to wait until she's either two or three to see like what's going on with that if it disappears on its own because I I can't tell you guys how many people I have had come up to me in the streets or wherever we're at and just say hey and this happened to my daughter or son or whatever and I've had so many people tell me that they're kids hemangiomas have just gone away on their own so I personally am not going to let my daughter go under laser surgery for her eye when it could just disappear on its own in a couple of years anyways and it's not like she'll be in school so kids aren't going to make fun of her or, or anything like that and to be honest with you guys like the people who have made fun or not made fun but have made like nasty or like rude comments about her hemangioma have all been old like all older people have said something like oh did she get a black eye oh are you beating your kid like it's just so rude, tacky, and just honestly it's despicable that the older generation is just so rude. Not all, but most most of the older generation. I'm talking about like 60s and up. Um, I had like a couple of men come up to me yesterday and they were probably in their like 60s, maybe 70s in church and they were like, oh, what happened to her eye? Did you punch her? That's child abuse. And it's just like, really? Like, who are you to, in church actually, have the audacity to say that to me? So that really pissed me off. But I mean, I obviously wasn't going to talk back because it's church and I didn't want to be disrespectful in church because they're older, you know. Back to my point, she is getting weaned off the propranolol and um, I'm going to be waiting until she's around two or three to see if I want to do the laser treatment for her or if it disappears on its own, then even better. So that's the deal with her birthmark. She understands small commands, like if I tell her to close the door, she'll close the door. If I tell her to bring something to me, she'll bring it to me. Um, what else? She picks up the phone all the time. She pretends that there's someone else on the other line. She'll just kind of like blab. Hey, we got to turn that off. You're going to get me copyrighted. As far as um, clothing sizes go, she is slowly growing out of a size 12 month and she's hey you be good girl she's growing out of a size 12 month clothes and she's now slowly starting to fit into 18 month size clothing so i'd say anywhere between 12 to 18 months hey what are you doing did you go poo poo you want poo poo yucky knows sign language so she knows how to say m-i-l-k i don't want to say it because i don't want to make her think that she's getting some right now but she knows how to sign for m-i-l-k um she knows how to sign for more she goes like this more huh um or she'll she'll either do this for more or if she wants to do something again she'll do that um she knows how i'm trying to teach her how to sign for thank you or i think it's like this thank you and then please is like you rub your belly but um she's still working on those and then what else does she she knows how to say all done so when she's in her high chair bye where are you going when she's in her high chair and she's all done with her food she'll go like this all done or if she's thirsty she'll go like this um or hungry either one she'll go like this but it's really like food i'll, I'll always sign to her like food are you hungry um we brush her teeth probably about once or twice a day. Um, I barely put any of that little toothpaste on there. And I only give her the baby toothpaste, so obviously nothing with fluoride in it or anything like that. She knows where her eyes, mouth, 
nose, ears, and belly button are. And she knows where her feet are. Yes. Yes. Good job, honey. Where's your eyes? Yes. Very good. Where's your nose? Good. Where's your tongue? Yes. Good job. Where's your ears? Good job. Where's your belly button? Belly button! Yay! You're so smart! You're so smart! I love you! It's just all about like positive reinforcement. Like, that's what I do with her. Uh oh. I always, I'm just like very repetitive as far as like asking her questions, like asking her where things are. And. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> it's all about just being super repetitive and then like being very positive when they do do something correct or when they do like say the right body part or whatever it is it's all about like positive reinforcement and just re repetition that's it as far as her naps go she is taking one nap a day um it's at 1 p.m now we kind of changed it to her brother's schedule so that way if i need adam to watch her then he can kind of be on the same schedule um or she can be on the same schedule as her brother just because it's easier for him I guess. hi yes okay put the cami down please thank you okay go play with your cards look <gasps> you for unicycle yeah. okay go play go play with your cards please she was very intelligent and she was very like aware of her surroundings. She's very perceptive. She's just like me. Yeah, she's just an all around really good baby. As far as her naps go, that's what I was talking about. Um, so she is taking one nap a day. She goes down at 1 p.m. and she'll wake up anywhere between 2.30 to 3. Um, today she had a little bit of a shorter nap. I think she might be teething, so she's not sleeping as long lately. So she only was down for like an hour today, so she'll probably be tired again before she goes to bed at 8.30 tonight. Her bedtime is still 8.30. She wakes up at probably around like 8 20 8 15 ish um that's what time she wakes up in the mornings and on the rare occasion she will let me sleep in until nine but that's like super rare she is still waking up a lot at night which has been taking a toll on me that's for sure um so she definitely does not sleep through the night still she uh we were working on sleep training with her but it's really really difficult when you're in a one bedroom to try and sleep train a baby um, or a toddler uh, but anyways so she is waking up and um, she's probably waking up anywhere between one to two times a night and lately she hasn't been wanting to go back to sleep in her own crib so I have been taking her out and pulling her into my bed which I know is completely wrong but like she loves other kids like anytime she sees another kid she's always like hi whether it be a baby or a big kid just any type of kid she just loves children so I think that that's really nice like it kind of tells me that she does want to interact with other children so I don't know if I should put her in like a daycare or like a ballet class or something like that so if you guys are in the Orange County area and know of any like activities with other babies or other um just like groups I guess like mom groups mommy and me groups stuff like that just let me know um because I don't really know many people with children my age or Harlow's age I know a couple but um it's always hard trying to like coordinate schedules and stuff so I feel like if I were to take her to like a group setting thing she would really enjoy something like that she has eight teeth now so she has four teeth on the top and she has four teeth on the bottom and it's so cute I love her little teeth she sees me brushing my teeth she wants to brush her teeth like she loves copying everything I do she loves going into my drawers pulling out my makeup and she today she opened up a tube of liquid lipstick and had it all over her face she was putting it on her eyes it was the funniest thing I was like copying everything I do 
cool and it's actually really cute um she follows me around she loves standing on the dishwasher she loves like she's actually a really good helper like that's one thing i will say like she she really anytime i'm like trying to fix something or trying to move something she's or clean she literally will help me like clean something if she sees me cleaning the bathtub she'll want to do it too um she's a really smart and a really really good girl and i just love i love her so much like she's just the light of my life you're the light of my life yes you are come here I love you. I love you, my baby girl. I love you. You're so sweet. As far as her food intake and milk intake goes, so first thing in the morning, I give her her medicine. Then I make her breakfast immediately because she is normally pretty hungry right when she wakes up. So a typical breakfast with her would be, what, you want to get down? Okay. A typical breakfast for Harlow would be scrambled eggs, fruit, and toast. I try to incorporate protein, carbs, and like a fruit for for breakfast. Um, I'm just now introducing her into juices. Before she would only ever drink just milk and water, but today I put like a splash of like peach mango juice in her water, and I think she really liked it. So. Um, I've been doing that then between like 9 and noon I'll give her like a snack so I'll give her like a cheese or I'll give her like some crackers or goldfish something like that just to hold her over until lunch and then at noon is when we'll typically have lunch and she eats like quesadillas a sandwich she'll eat corn dogs she'll pretty much eat anything that I eat for lunch um, I even tried to make a salad yesterday and she wanted some of that so she's a really good eater I don't ever force her to eat I let her choose all on her own what to eat and stuff like that and I think that that's like a really important um, aspect in trying to get your toddler to not be picky is like they have to want to do it on their own and I only provide healthy options for her most of the time that way she does choose to be healthy on her own I never force her if she's full and doesn't want to eat anymore then I don't ever push it on her I don't try to reward her with candy or reward her with a cookie or anything like that if I make something and she doesn't want to eat it oh well that's on you like sorry so she knows like if if she doesn't like it she ain't eating so <clears throat> I think that that's really like an important thing is like just don't give in to your kids and like don't reward their bad behavior of not wanting a certain vegetable or fruit by rewarding them with candy or cookies or anything like that they should want to choose the healthy option on their own and you should only be providing them with healthy options if you want them to eat healthy so I think that that's like a really important aspect that a lot of people don't get when kind of like teaching your kids to eat healthy or trying to not have a picky eater or something like that so maybe I'll do a video on that or something I don't know but um yeah so that's what she'll typically have for lunch and I always try to incorporate just like with breakfast I always try to incorporate a protein a veggie and a carb so we'll eat like chicken rice and a veggie for lunch and same goes with dinner um I try to mix things up so I'll give her like meatloaf or last night I made carne asada so I cut it up like really 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 tiny in little tiny bites so she could eat it but she didn't really like it so she didn't have any of the carne asada but that's okay at least I know now like not to make that until she's like a little bit older and can actually like chew it yeah, you just it's all trial and error and um, even if you do all those things and let your kid choose to eat or not eat like certain things on their own and they still don't want to eat like that's not your fault it's just you do truly have a picky eater so try something else like if they don't want to eat like a certain protein why don't you try hummus or try edamame like those are both high in protein and they're not necessarily like chicken or steak or beef or whatever so you just gotta like find the healthiest options for them and incorporate that into their diet so that's just 
one little tip that I have. She'll get an eight ounce bottle before her first nap and then um, if I think she's like really hungry, I'll give her a bottle at 4.30 or I'll give her a snack, either one. And then before bed at 8.30 p.m., she'll take another 8-ounce bottle. So she doesn't necessarily drink all of it, but I like to give her the option of having that much milk just because in case she is like super hungry, like she can have that and it'll hold her, her through the rest of the night. So as, as of right now, she is getting enough calories to get her through the night but I think it's just her teeth that are bothering her so that's why she's been waking up a lot lately so that's like her whole food schedule and I do give her water with her breakfast lunch and dinner so she's getting a lot of water intake as well red you know that a lot of kids get constipated once they start solids and all of that but that never really happened with Harlo just because I've always given her a lot of water whenever um, she's eating her solids not a lot but like as much as she wants to drink so I always just let like the food process like happen naturally and on its own kind of like I don't try to force anything on her I think that that's like a huge thing that like parents need to understand is like don't ever try to force your kid to eat a certain thing or don't ever try to force them to eat all of their food like their stomachs are so small like you can't force a baby to eat however much you want them to eat like it's just they're gonna throw up like it's not possible and if it is then they're gonna be overweight because a baby knows how much it's supposed to eat and when to stop so that's my motto on it and if you think otherwise then that's fine too that's the way that my mom raised me and my mom and my grandma have always been super thin we don't ever worry about our weight like I'm never worried about like me gaining weight ever I know for a fact like I will never gain weight because it's just not in my genetic makeup and even if it wasn't I feel like I would use this method still just because it's not right to force someone to do something they don't want to do so you shouldn't ever force your kid to eat food that they don't want to eat anyways I'm going like way deep into that topic <laughs> but um what else can I tell you guys about Harlow Harlow what are you doing she's being really quiet I'm gonna go check on her so as far as milk goes um I have given her whole milk I've given her the horizon red um carton of milk it's like there's DHA in there and it's just regular whole milk I've given that to her it does seem to bother her a little bit as far as her stomach goes at night I've noticed that she kind of like toots a lot more at night so she gets a little bit more gassy um ever since like her obviously being off of breast milk so it's gonna happen like she's taking a bottle and she's taking cow's milk so naturally like when that adjustment you're gonna have gas so um <coughs> I also have given her Enfamil, the toddler next step. So if I don't have like enough milk on hand, then I'll just give her some of that. Um, I feel like I've honestly been switching around her milk so much lately that it's not good for her. But um, I mean, she's been staying like part of the time with me and then part of the time with Adam whenever I was going to work and stuff. So that's kind of why like we had like an off putting thing with her milk situation but um I'm trying to just get her on whole milk I still feel like she does need like all of the nutrients and stuff that the formula will provide for her so I don't know like what like what did you guys do as far as that went when you guys transitioned your toddler from breast or formula milk to whole milk like did you incorporate the formula still or did you solely just like cold turkey put them on whole milk let me know in the comments down below and also let me know like what you guys think the best whole milk is I've given her goat's milk which is supposed to be really good for the digestive system um, she will take and it's got a ton of fat which I like I need that for Harlow because that is what's gonna help her get bigger and grow and as well as protein see I do bathe her daily <laughs> if that's of any importance to anyone um, I give I bathe her with the Dove shampoo and then I'll put like the up and up baby wash on her body 
and I give her a bubble bath almost every night and then I'll put lotion on her skin say she loves the pool she loves being outside she loves the outdoors and like she just she's like a very adventurous fun loving perfect girl and I couldn't be more blessed so so that is pretty much the update on Harlow for her 16 month update I can't believe like she is almost a year and a half old right April May June July August September October yeah so in October she'll be in a, a year and a half like what what uh, anyways um i think that's pretty much all that i had to let you guys know as far as harlow goes she is healthy she's happy and that's all that matters and i can't wait to share more with you guys thank you guys so much for liking my videos subscribing all of that i really appreciate it more than you will ever know and um let me know in the comments down below any videos you guys would like to see next uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you are new here. I would really genuinely appreciate it. And with that being said, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.